I'm Rick Johansson and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're going to do an Inkscape tutorial on how to make a repeating geometric pattern. And this is meant to be a beginner, beginner intermediate level tutorial. So if you're just starting out, I'll try to make the steps nice and easy. And if you have some experience, follow along and, and you can modify as you please. So here's several examples I put together. This is a line art version you can do. Here's a grayscale one that we're going to do today. And then you can always colorize it later. So if you recognize this pattern, it's actually, this is, that's from a zoomed in photo that I took. That's the Epcot ball. So, you know, from Disney World, the spaceship Earth thing. Anyway, so I thought that was a cool thing we could copy. And that brings us to the first step, which is how to create the shapes we're going to repeat. So if you look at this pattern, it's all based on the triangle. So you could take the Bezier pen tool and try to draw one out, but it has to be precise, has to be exact, because when you repeat it out, it needs to be a seamless pattern and it won't work because if there's one little error, it'll just magnify and mess up. So luckily there's a tool in Inkscape that will help us here. So if you go to up to the top, extensions, then go down to render, then you'll see triangle, click on that. And then this will bring up a menu and it's kind of busy, but don't worry. This allows us to punch in the exact dimensions of this one triangle, which if you look is the whole pattern just repeated a bunch of times. So, but how do you do that? Like what is, what are the angles? And that brings us to one more thing you need and it is called math. <laughs> so this is like a right brain, left brain tutorial, but it's, it's, I'll make it quick and easy. So I shaded in this Delta here so we can think about what is this one angle here? If I can figure out this, I can make the whole thing work. Now this is a rule from back in the day from geometry class. Angles around a point always add up to 360 degrees. So here's one point, there's one, two, three angles, divide 360 by three, and that gives you 120. So back up here, extensions, then go to render, triangle. That will let it, that, now we know that angle, and then you punch that in, and there's one more piece of math, trigonometry. The inside angles of a triangle always add up to 180. So if we know that's 120, and these two are, are equal, then it's 30, 30. So that's what we're gonna punch in. So back onto your triangle menu. Don't worry about these lengths. That's if you wanna draw like a different triangle. This is all vector, so it doesn't matter the, the, the um, distances, but the angles matter here. So angle A, angle B, angle C. If you have it on mode um, from sides A, B, and angle A, just type in 30 for the angle A, 120 for angle B, and 30 for angle C, then click apply. And here it is. This is the rendered triangle. And we'll close out of the menu and we'll bring it into some open space. And now we can make our pattern. And we can do it with confidence knowing this is the perfect dimension. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. So if you hold shift and control, then you can draw it open. And now we can play with it. So let's, let's actually move into some open space here. And then I want the reference photo so you can see what we're doing. All right, so if it's selected, do control D, that's gonna duplicate it and then pull one out. And then see these like arrows here? If you click on it, watch what happens. It'll turn it around perfectly. Now we need to line it up, line it up and then have it like collapse onto it. And there's kind of a cool trick there. So get your points as close as you need to be right about there. And then if you actually click on it again, and so you, you see like the, the curved handles, which allows you to rotate it. You see this like hash mark, this plus, that's like a pivot point. So draw that down and put it down on that corner and it's gonna be a hinge, watch this. So if you zoom in, get it exactly where you want it, because this, this is important here. So get it right on the hinge point, and then watch what happens here. If you go back up to the hinge, let's center this so you can see the effect. Grab, grab the uh, handle, and then you just draw it in. This hinges perfectly. And then to make sure you got it right, I'm gonna change the color of this line here. So I'll go to Shift, and then hit Red, and then shift lets you choose the, the stroke color. So shift, I can do any color, blue, but red's easy to see. So now I can zoom in and that is where we want it. <laughs> okay, so we've got our delta here. We'll change the color back in a minute. And then to cheat, now we'll just click off of that, click back on the red one, and then do control D again. That duplicates it. And to show you, I'll just change the color again. So hold shift and then just pick a different color. We'll do this, I don't know, what is that, turquoise? And then now choose horizontal, and there you go. So I could try to slide it over, but another trick is if I just choose my new, whatever, teal color, if you hold control, that's gonna lock in your horizontal or vertical. So I'm holding control and I can drag it. It won't let me mess up. And then I'll just shift it into place. 
and now I'll zoom in to make sure it's right. Oh, see how it's like not perfect? In this case, we do, normally I like to go fast, but in this case we need to be as precise as possible. So I have it selected, I'm gonna nudge it until I get it in there. It, actually, there's a point I wanna bring up. So I have enable snapping off, sometimes has to fault it on. If you've been playing along and you're trying to like hinge the thing, and it's, it's just kind of like shifting on you, and it, you might have snapping enabled. So if, if that's been happening to you, it's just in, take it off. Put it back on normal for later, because it is a good tool, but in this case, it's up here, enable snapping. I want it off, because if it was on, it might try to shift it, um, take control. So I want control here, and now that looks, that looks as, that's as, as even as we're gonna get, and that'll make the effect of this repeated pattern work great. So let's zoom back out, and we can fix the colors now. <laughs> it looks, it kind of, you could do it in that color pattern, but I wanna keep it to the, the plan. So I'll do shift, make that one black, shift, and then make that one black. Now at this point, if you like the line art version, you can keep going without the shading, but I wanna, I brought this in, this is just the colors I wanna do. I'm gonna cheat here with the color palette I already brought in, but let's choose the bottom one. And then if you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it's just like paintbrush thing. So I've got, this is my menu up here. I've got this one selected. I'm gonna choose my fill, and then I'll do eyedropper, and then the bottom. Now I'll go to this one, I'll go to eyedropper, this one, and then I'll choose this triangle, eyedropper, that one. All right, so then there is my initial base piece. So let's group the whole thing together. So I grab the whole thing, Control G. Now I'll do Control D to duplicate it, and then back to these arrows again, I'll just reverse one so it's the other direction. And then the same trick as before, I'll click the top one, hold Control, and it'll, it'll lock it in on the vertical axis here and put it near, I'll zoom in to make it precise as possible. Okay, zoom back out, let's fix the colors on the bottom. So again, I'll go to my, let's just choose one of the triangles here. If you double click, it'll just isolate one. Choose fill, that is down here will be that color. Choose this one, fill this color, and then this last one. All right, okay, so <laughs> it kind of looks like the Ethereum logo. Is that, is this subliminal here? All right, so let's group this whole one together. So grab it and then control G, the whole thing's grouped. I'm gonna duplicate it, I'll leave that one there in case, in case we have a crash. Good time to save, so file, save. Okay, before we go ahead and put it together into the part we're gonna stamp into the repeatable pattern, I wanna change the stroke, cause this is nice and heavy, we were scaling it, it's good to see from the tutorial. But if you go up to your stroke menu, if the whole thing's selected, go to stroke, I'm gonna change it to 2.5 and I'm on millimeters. So if I hit enter, and that makes a nice thin stroke around each shape, I just like the look of it better. So now let's go ahead and make this thing repeat. All right, so I'll do control D to duplicate it. I'll hold control again so I can slide it over and the same axis. Is that, that good? That is pretty close. Okay, that's good right there. And then because we want the different deltas to kind of have like the, the look of depth, I'm gonna flip this one upside down and then actually, I think I'm gonna flip it one more time to the right, and then that'll give us, when it, you'll see what happens when it repeats. So let's group this, Control G, Control D to duplicate, I'll hold Control, I'll move it over, and then just make sure, I'm <laughs> pretty good. All right, so then with this repeated four, I can stack it twice and then create the stamp out where we'll have it so you can automate your seamless pattern if you take this project um, outside of Inkscape. Let's go ahead and do that. So control D. And then as you're doing this, if I just line it up, see how this color, that color together, I wanna flip it. Cause I wanna have some contrast. Same thing for the one on top. I'll control D, duplicate that one. And then if I put it there, it already has the contrast. And now we can go forward. So all we did was we just created this pattern and now we're going to make a box in the interior and then stamp that out. And then that will, will repeat for infinity. First, you wanna group the whole thing, so get all of it, then control G, and then grab your Create Rectangles and Squares tool. I have it set to green, something very easy, and we're gonna go from this point, these four points here, so just watch this. I'll make it roughly where we want it, and then we'll, we'll zoom in to get it precise. I don't need, so there's my green. First, opacity down here, get it down someplace where you can see better, like around 50% then go to stroke and then get the stroke off of it. Now through the magic of editing, I lined everything up nicely. All I did was I zoomed in and then see these handles here, you can move your green so it's right in between the two, the seams. That way it'll repeat 
seamlessly. All right, so now we've got we've got the green box, we've got our pattern. All we have to do now is hold shift, collect the pattern, then go up here to object, clip, set. <laughs> and there you go, we did it. Okay, so let's zoom out, I'll show you how to repeat it now. So one easy tool you can do is if you go to edit, clone, create tiled clones, and then uh, the menu doesn't always pop up for me. Click off of it and then click back on the menu and then there you go. Okay, so basically rows, columns, six by six, and we'll do five by five, just see what that looks like. Five by five, it's selected, give it some space. Actually, we'll zoom out so there's plenty of space and then create. And there, there we go, there's our Epcot. <laughs> so I, many years ago during college, I worked at Epcot for one summer and it was uh, one of the best summers of my life. And now, all these years later, I can say I can I can recreate the the look of the Epcot ball, and you can too. So thanks.